on its own, you slam shut, it's ball. And Nancy had welts on her face, three marks, three welts on her face, as if she'd been slapped. No way! No, no way! possessed while in this house it is not my fault i'm not going down there you said there's a non-human entity down there i can't go all the way down there dude Buddy, good yeah, to see you. Good. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you. How you doing, bro? Yeah. How are you been? Nice to see you. How you doing? Hey, oh, that voice like grip of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a mask. Hello there. Should we go inside, talk more in there, and get out of the rain? Yeah, definitely. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go inside. The Conjuring House, arguably the most infamous haunted home in the world, that inspired one of the most famous horror movies of all time. Yet the terrifying events within the movie are only a fraction of the true horror that takes place here every single day. A non-human demonic entity lurking in the basement. A well that is suspected to be a portal to the spirit world. Visitors being scratched to the point of bleeding. Poltergeist activity, doors being slammed, and items being thrown across the room. Hearing threats from the entities here, not only out loud, but within your own mind. Nearly every form of paranormal activity imaginable has been documented within this home and tonight we were fortunate enough to contribute truly remarkable evidence built in 1736 in a remote part of Rhode Island surrounded by stone walls open fields a river and a forest the house still stands as completed nearly 300 years ago if the soil it sits upon may be the most responsible for the spiritual energy engraved into the fabric of this property the paranormal history of this home has been traced as far back as the early 1700s when the spirits of Native American tribes embedded themselves within the land. The many battles that took place in the literal backyard, the suspected graves of soldiers just outside the windows, the ley lines and water sources running around and below the basement. All of these factors contributing, if not building towards, the incidents that took place with the Perrin family in the 1970s, infamously involving Ed and Lorraine Warren in a seance in the living room. Carolyn and and Roger Perrin, along with their five daughters, endured terror every single night for nearly a decade, tormented physically and mentally by the spirits. Over the years, theories and rumors have spread about these hauntings being due to Bathsheba, a Satanist, sadistic, and murderous spirit that resides within the home. Yet all of this has been debunked and proven to be factually incorrect, now leaving the cause of all of the hauntings within this home to be rediscovered. A search for a deeper understanding of the horrific hauntings within and around this home is the reason we are here tonight, and why we have asked Dan Rivera, guardian of the Warren Occult Museum, and the real Annabelle Dahl, who has also worked firsthand with Lorraine Warren, to join us, as well as Carl Johnson, the very first paranormal investigator to be called to the Conjuring House by Carolyn Perrin herself. He is here to give us firsthand knowledge of the demonic encounters he had here nearly 50 years ago. Our goal tonight is to do whatever we can to document paranormal evidence, even if it means pushing some bounds to do so. And well, it worked. What year were you here? 1973. Oh, my mom August was not born yet. Wow. All right, well, <laughs> if you're filming, we'll start again. I'm old enough, <laughs> to, that. I'm old enough to be your daddy then. You might be. I'm proud of myself. I don't even know what you're doing. You were the first one ever called here. Yes, significant, but I was the first one to step in the door. We were a team based at Rhode Island College of Pyro. Parapsychological Investigatory and Research Organization. We are contacted by Mrs. Carolyn Perrin. She invited us to come and evaluate the strange happenings in her farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island. That was our first experience as a team with a haunted residence. We've been doing wow. exterior cases, settings, and we wanted to branch out and address people's house hauntings. And this house certainly delivered for our first case. The first time we came here in August 1973, things were happening, uh, memorable things. All these years later, it's like, it looked like it was last week for me. What was the original report? Like when they first, when she first reached out? She didn't want to leave her, her house, she and her husband Roger, but they felt they would have to leave here if things didn't settle down and she wanted us to come and explore, document, film, record, see what we could find out if we could determine what was causing these things. She thought probably a spirit from the past, but something, something was up here. 
I came to feel that the house itself is the haunting. It's the experience of the house. The house has become like a, an organism with all the people that have lived in it. Some died in this house. It's absorbed memories, taken on kind of an evanescent life of its own, and it reacts to people. If people are a little uh, hostile or too anxious to experience something, nothing will happen or it kind of wants them to get out, and it, it makes the, that known. It can be uh, unfriendly to people. They'll hear and sometimes see things. But things were happening while we were here and we just did not anticipate that. I was all of uh, 17 years old. So You were 17? What was Carolyn's experience in the, in the bedroom? Carolyn was being more effective. She, she couldn't be detached from it. We were just right. investigating, so anything that happened was great for us. But she was living here, right in this room, interviewing Carolyn Perrin. Roger, we met him, her husband, and he had to go out on the road. We started speaking, asking her about what had happened in this house, and it sounded pretty eerie. It was definitely occupied by unseen presences. That's what we determined that day. Uh, I heard footsteps and moving around, shuffling like furniture being moved, coming from the upstairs. After a few minutes of that, I asked Mrs. Perrin, excuse me, do you have a guest upstairs? And she and the girls said, she had five daughters. They said, no, we hear that almost every day. Just hear things upstairs. So eventually our team went upstairs. In the far bedroom, as you enter the upstairs, there was one window at that time, the right side window that was jammed open. The rest of our team came into the room and with the girls, and one of the daughters, Nancy, was with us. My brother tried an experiment with provocation, religious provocation, not screaming at a spirit, but my brother recited the 23rd Psalm, from the biblical book of Psalms. Then he said the holy name of Jesus, as he said that name, that window on its own just slammed shut. Boom. What? Wow. Boom. Just slammed shut. At the same time, we kind of heard a slapping sound. And Nancy had welts on her face, three marks, three welts on her face. Wow. As if she'd been slapped. I mean, she didn't scream, but she had tears in her eyes. I went into the basement. Our case managers just would not go down there. At that time, there was one light suspended from the ceiling down there. I'm making my way around there. At that time, nothing seemed to happen in the cellar, except that the light suddenly extinguished itself. The light bulb went off. Now, if you can picture a 17-year-old Carl down there, and all of a sudden, <laughs> darkness, as I, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> we heard thumping upstairs in various rooms, like knocking on the wall. You'd think somebody was coming into the room and knocking first. So we were not disappointed. We told Mrs. Perrin, we're going to uh, compile our notes we've been taking, and we'll give you our report. The next day, Mrs. Carolyn Perrin called me and we would speak every day on the phone for the next probably two and a half weeks. Wow. She called me to keep me updated on the happenings in the house. I was on the phone with her uh, for a good hour. She called me back shortly after we said goodbye and said something just happened. She was slicing an orange in the kitchen and viscous fluid, red, it wasn't a blood orange, it was a red fluid came out of that orange, spill onto the floor. She also told me and our team that she was awoken during the night and saw a vision of what looked like a woman, but she couldn't make out the face and it was threatening her. She wanted us to come back, so three weeks after our initial visit, we returned. By this time, it was the beginning of September. What a change in Carolyn Parent. She was a slender woman anyway, but she looked like she'd aged at least 10 years. It looked like she hadn't slept or eaten. She was thinner. Her hair was disheveled. She just looked not well. Roger, who was kind of stoic about all of this and detached, he was getting nervous because scratches appeared on his forearms. We continued our investigation. To the best of our ability, we're conducting a scientific investigation. Now, at that time, I was acquainted with Ed and Lorraine Warren in Monroe, Connecticut. And of course, you know the Warrens. You knew them very well. What a nice touch it would be to consult the Warrens, and maybe benefit from their vast experience. Tell them what was happening in this house we were investigating. And he volunteered to come here. I helped show them around, but Carolyn was leading the tour. She took them to the basement. That's when the Warrens became involved with the situation here, and they actually took over the case. So I didn't hear from Mrs. Parent for some time, and then she called me and said, you know, there was the investigation was well underway. I think it was more of an intercession on the Warrens' part than an investigation. That's how I became involved with this House, the first investigation of what 40 years later would become known as the 46 years later became the Conjuring House. Carol's bedroom, <coughs> about two owners later, set that up as the library, but that was the bedroom. That was where Carolyn had that vision at night, and she heard this voice probably telepathically, and the voice supposedly said, I'll drive you out with fiery brooms, I'll drive you out with death and gloom. 
you'll try to flee, but it will be too late, you'll be dead. But that was Carolyn Parent's experience. Well, There's a theory that the house really wasn't haunted before the parents moved in. Mm -hmm. It was that unique battery, that combination. The husband who was always off on the road in his business, Mrs. Parent, a very sensitive and intuitive, and the five daughters. Maybe they were the perfect storm for this house. My theory is that it, that's the only way it can manifest, that it has a semi-intelligence to it. It may be a conglomerate of personalities that had lived in this house, and that's the matrix that formed this thing. We'll never know unless it tells us. Do any of you guys know the correlation between this house and the Annabelle dolls? The only correlation I could <laughs> cite would be through the Warrens. Yeah. Oh, because gosh. that's how Annabelle came to be. Gotcha. Annabelle is a rather sizable Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah. Way bigger yeah. than that. It's yeah. bigger than it's, that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good size because they used to make those dolls big. Yeah, that oh, was a wow. gift uh, given to uh, Corey and, uh, and Jen when uh, they bought the house. Somebody built them the case, uh, replicating the case that I built for Annabelle. Did yeah, you, you build the actual case, case for the real Annabelle doll? Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. That mirror there. I remember going up to it thinking, I think that's the mirror that was on the wall when the parents had ownership of this house. Back then, I was also into ritual magic. I was actually a Satanist back then. Right? Really? Yeah, yeah, I got a skull. Really? The human skull that you saw in the museum. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. star in the middle. No yeah. way. That was yours. That's, that's, that's yours. Yeah. That was from when I was a practicing Satanist. Practicing, never got perfect at it. Oh, I did that for a few years, and oh, wow. of course it would be dramatic oh, to say that I had some awakening and you know got away from all that. But it's just I did it for a while, and that was enough. I became my own thing, and I was a Luciferian. What is your definition of Satanism? Right, so let's cut to the chase and call it what it is: ritual magic, Satanism, and Earth religion. It's a religion of the flesh, the mundane, mm -hmm. not of the spirit. It's the opposite. Of spirit. It's humanism mm -hmm. with. Uh, Black clothes and black handles. <laughs> yeah, I gotta bring them down sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it left its imprint because I'm still interested in that. If some Satanists invited me to their ritual chamber, I wouldn't say no. I would tell myself. I'm investigating. Don't Can you me also wrong. invite us if you get that invite? Yeah. Can you get like a plus I one? Or a plus, a plus, <laughs> plus four. Three. A plus I think, four. A plus I think three. anybody yeah. who investigates plus wants three. to see something yes. like that. Yeah. Um, Especially them. They I, all want to. And there is a lot of that that has happened. Wait, wait. I'm sure still does. Oh, really? Actually? Yeah. The Carl Drew murders in Bedford Falls in the early 1980s. That was a satanic cult. And there were two murders and a beheading. They believe in Satan in a very literal sense. The more evil you do, the more Satan will bless you and empower you. And they never have good endings because that is true evil. Drink the blood of their sacrificed animals. That's just way beyond me how sacrificing goats. I found they, one. A goat was sacrificed it was about six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, not too, a couple towns away from me. And uh, it made it into the newspaper. Oh, yeah. But the police department were downplaying it. A friend and I went out there because the guy that found it wanted to know what was really going on. Yeah, one more And one uh, you could, but then we started following the trail of blood from the goat, and it went up, came from the path coming from the road down the embankment towards the water. It just it smelled like rotting flesh. It was the sacrifice, it was the goat, oh, the, the ghost carcass was laying in the water. That's crazy how that still goes on, on, on like the down low and secrecy. Like those, like, those are just people who work at like AT&T during the daytime. I think you said the move for tonight. Man. It's been a while. It's Dude. been a while. How much you sleep up here? Is this the room for you? Where it happened? Yeah. It came from here. <laughs> Whoa! Right when he did that. Oh, wait! 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 wait. 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 Shut off. Why did it? It just went off. He, yeah. he just jokingly was like, boo, boo, boo. And as soon as he did that, it went crazy. Oh, like, it, as if it oh, like. Wait. Oh, oh, oh! What's in there? The music, I put the music box in there. Cool. That was weird. Whoa. <laughs> I wish. Can you use these rods that I'm holding to point in the direction that you are? What? What? What happened? Oh shit. Oh shit. It's pointing back here. Oh, oh no. If that happened, jeez. Oh shit. Oh. Right behind Jonah. 
Damn. Also, you know what's crazy? You know how the music box went off? It's pointed in the other direction. I'm standing in this doorway that hasn't gone off. Uh, in the chair? Oh! <laughs> you put it in the uh, put it in the chair. Turn, turn to the right and see if it still points in the chair. Oh, okay. That's Yo, right. wow. that, that was actually Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. Turn it back the other way. So when you first came up here on your first investigation, you walked through that door there. Mm -hmm. And what you were telling us, what did you see when you were up here? I waited for the interview to resume. I made my way up here quietly. Uh, as soon as I got to the top of the stairs, that noise. Yes. Keep going. Noises ceased. Uh, I came in here and it was very quiet, except I could hear them downstairs speaking. Um, looking around, I'm looking towards the top of the stairwell out of the corner of my eye, my right peripheral vision. I saw a darkness, so naturally I turned to look. To my amazement, something I can only interpret it as black, but it's coming towards me. I thought smoke. I saw. I thought there's a backdraft. The house is on fire. I'm going to smell smoke. This is for an instant. I thought that, and this is all of three seconds at the most. I see this coming towards me, and when it reached me through that doorway, I reflexively closed my eyes and I opened it. It was gone. I didn't feel anything. I didn't smell anything from it. Didn't feel any emotional response. It just this darkness came, except I was startled at it. It was that palpable. It stopped me in my tracks. Wow. I call it the darkening. I have nothing else to call it. Shadow person, maybe. Imagine a shadow person without that anthropomorphic form, not looking like a person, just spreading out through the room. And it's hard to say where it begins, where it leaves off. Just amorphous, but a blackness. Yeah. Did you guys hear that man talking? Yes. What? It, it was like, uh, uh, he, he said immediately yes. Well, you heard it as well? Yeah. While you were talking, you heard it, right? And it's hard to say where it begins, where it leaves off. Just amorphous, but a blackness. Yeah. Downstairs. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was like it was almost like a play piano or something. Okay, but it, well, no, no. Everyone stops talking right now. And then we talk again. The gap should be gone. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait. What was that? Did that say hi? Oh, There's some kind of sound signature on that. That's awesome. that was like a high. <laughs> what again? Hi. Hi. Now that. Hi. Nobody <laughs> said hi. No, I literally, I literally was like, everyone's not talking. And we're all right here, just you standing. Right now? I know. So somebody's right here. With someone. Yeah. Is here with us, some presence. Yeah. Should we continue? Is Did it go off that? Yep. They're right here. Is should that we continue the session? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I think we should turn the lights out if that's okay. Can I have a good Um, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, you'll be the first one to speak, so. Three, two. Are you happy that you have visitors in this home? How many spirits are here with us tonight? Hi. Do you want us to stay tonight? Is there anyone in this room that you specifically would like to be alone with? Were you the one bringing harm to the girls that lived in this house and to their mother?
Do you want to play a game with us tonight? You spoke to us and we heard you. We heard your voice. It almost sounds like someone's watching TV downstairs. <laughs> Bro, there is a <coughs> lot of voices behind me. There. Did you hear yeah, that? Yeah, I can hear them. I know you heard one. I, I know you heard one. Yeah. There are voices, bro. And I'm just hearing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like muffled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm happy to be a visitor to the house. Uh, I'm happy to be a visitor to the house. What the fuck? It's that like was better than the first one. Dude, <laughs> that was insane. That yeah. might, that's the scariest thing I think I've been a yeah. part of. <laughs> As we move further left, they get a little bit louder. What year is it? Are you a young spirit? Can you tell me why you're here in this house? Can persons see you? Will we see you? Do you mean us harm? Do you remember the Perrin family? Do you remember Roger? Why were you so attached to Carolyn? If you can see us, please say yes. Do you miss the women who lived here and their energies, their emotions? Or do you love to see them in pain? What should we call you? Oh, 
when I asked uh, the D mark, I mean, or did you mean as harm or something like that? Uh -huh. Did you read this repeat say Roger again? It almost sounded like a uh Roger. Yes, Roger. Roger. Somebody's trying to tell more of the story. So exactly. Oh, well, that like, energy is trapped here. What yeah. happened here? Even trapped energy could develop a personality yeah. with time. And, you know. well, like I'm trying to tell you what really happened. Yeah. And that name that was repeated after you said it. Mm -hmm. That Roger. Yes. And it's the, the girls. And with the girls hiding. Yeah. Parents. Or the were were those the uh, the parent girls hiding from. Do you want to tell them more? Yeah, uh, this is just a theory. And then what evidence I've captured here and what it, this is what it's telling me. I personally believe that, you know, certain, when you go into an investigation, families don't tell you the full story, what's really happening in the house. They blame their occurrences on other things, ghostly, demonic things that are harming them called parapsychological projection or was it somebody that was human and that was close to the family harming them physically and mentally can you fill in the blanks there up oh. with what he's saying oh yeah yeah look at that so was a male figure really abusive to the women in this house that's all I have to say everything's going off right now you remember I told you Carolyn wanted to tell me something, but she didn't want to say it over the phone. She wanted to meet some. What's well, so many years later? It doesn't matter. Yeah. She wanted to uh, tell me something, and she wanted to meet someplace and tell me. I had some ideas at the time what she was trying to tell me, but there might have been more to it. Than yeah, that. and, and I when guessed. I and when I say when the girls will hide in the closet, yeah. and in the middle of the night they hear, the, they will lock this door here, purposely. For when the father came home at night, the girls were hiding from him because he's trying to get into the room. Was their father the demon? Mm. Th that's just my theory. I mean, I'm putting nothing to it. It's just a theory. But a lot of the evidence that I captured here leads more towards that. And as we're asking questions, it's kind of putting two and two together. For a time to Carolyn, he was. And Damn. I'm not supposing too much and I'm not taking any sides or blaming. I'm just saying, for Carolyn wanted out. Carolyn was terrorized would be too strong a word, but she wanted out. Wow. Things you couldn't say 20 years ago. Yeah, of course. Do you, do you believe in manifestation or what some refer to as like an angry war? Where you put so much thought and energy into their and actually you create, being. You create, and you create it. You create it. That may be the description of the house. 
once the nerds took residence here. I'm not saying they created every entity that's here. Yeah. No. Many of those are from the past. Yeah. But whatever attachments were part of them, whatever was driving, if it was the father, what was driving him still here. That energy is still trapped here because it affected the girls and, they, and the walls absorbed that energy. It's a psychic scream that says, let me out, let me go. Just keep that in the back of your mind. It's a possibility. So if you capture any other evidence, maybe it's similar to what we're talking about. I'm curious to see if the mirror can pick up stuff that we can't. I moved it to the other bedroom. He moved it. The far bedroom? Yeah. I'm saying it's just going off like madness. Mm -hmm. I moved it to the other bedroom. It's on the dresser, way above bed level, nothing in front of it. For like. Yeah, good. There's a GoPro in there. Good? Come on, Corey. But well, you need a flashlight. The light's already on the music box. Alright, you're for this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow! Oh, <laughs> go, go, go! I'm alright. Uh, that's a stupid idea. We wow! You want what? us to go in there? Do that again. Go walk towards me. Hey, I'm coming in, okay? That's crazy. It doesn't, like, like you really physically has to yeah, go up yeah, yeah, no. next to it. That's why I love this thing. That's why I was like, can you please ship it back to me? If you don't think we should go in here and make that box light up again on the floor, just to protect us, you know? If you think Match is staying here by himself, please light up that box right there. What is it? What's actually making it go off? That's what I'm saying. Let's find out. Hello? Oh, this room's big. That's a big... Oh, oh dude. Is it one of the bed? Yes. What the hell is it on? I don't like oh, this. Oh, or the doll in the rocking chair. Why are there windows? Is that a window? Hi. Yeah, it is. Watch it stop. Hey, guys. Is it okay that we're in here? Stop, Corey. Hello? What the fuck was that? Why'd you stop? What's going on? Let's, let's get out of the, the way of this. Hello? Is anyone in here? Yeah, it stopped. As soon as we came in here, now it's not this thing. The chalkboard? Is there somebody still in that yeah, room? Is. Whoa. Is it nailed? I didn't see that door. They nailed it in. Is it nailed? Yeah, it might be swollen. No, 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 look. Right here. It's... Oh, you're right. <laughs> they locked by itself. Yeah, thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate it. It's really cool. Pleasure. Yeah. Whoever you are, can you use these two sticks I'm holding to show us where you are? It's okay to point. Please show us where you are now. Point two. There's consistency, huh? Thank you, thank you so much. We'll see you at another time. We'll speak to you, we'll come here and visit you. Thank you. I'm alone, waiting for the other guys to finish filming in the other room. And Elton went downstairs to say goodbye to Dan, and uh, I don't think I'm alone. <laughs> this round five keeps going on. And uh, I wish 
there were other people in here. Oh my god. Yeah, this is like non stop. No, I didn't just vlog him. Wait, there's really no one No, it's just me. Really? Yeah. Scared a lot growing up here? The kids are still alive, aren't they? What is that? What? What? Whoa! What? 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 Okay, wait. How far to the left of me can you see? I mean, it's pretty much just your frame. Oh, what'd you see? Like, I didn't get anything. In what'd you see? Whoa, turn that off, Cat. Dude! There was a giant white circle on with, the wall. Yes, but there was multiple parts of the circle that weren't lit, lit up. So it was like multiple different parts of the circle in the circle lighting up. And it was slowly just moving up right here and then it just disappeared completely. What? And then right as it disappeared, that spiked. What? What is that? Was that the door? No, it had a floorboard. Okay, wait, everybody. What? What is that? Is that you? That was me. Can you make a noise for us? What? It's coming in the... The chalk. It's a chalk. It's a chalk. Everybody's silent. Everybody's silent. Can you knock for us? Are you dragging your fingernail? Dude. No. No, what this the is fuck. Where, where is that coming up for you for you from you? I, I don't know. That that was the first time that I've actually gotten like chills. That Thank was the, you. what the hell. Are you trying to communicate with us? Dude. So this is this is the best way that you can communicate with us, right? This is the easiest way. It doesn't take up too much energy. You can kind of scratch on the wall, and that's how you can answer. Yes? Dude. 